Hello and welcome to United Church Online. We're so glad that you decided to join us today. If you are new to United Church, why don't you fill in the Connect card in the description or visit our website for more information. So let's ready our Bibles, notebooks and pens as we get ready to receive the Word together. I am I'm very excited for this morning's message because this is something I felt strongly in my heart is a message for where we are as a church, who we are as a church, and what God is wanting to say to us as a church. So the title of my message this morning is called Living in the Stretch, Living in the Stretch. And obviously, we know that the goal is for you and I to grow to becoming healthy, strong, whole believers, um, filled with purpose. And normally, the greatest enemy towards a healthy, thriving Christianity or a, 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 a purpose that God has called us to is comfort and complacency. And there's always this tension of how we outlive or how we outwork God's purpose for us as individuals and as a church and also holding on to comfort and complacency. How do we live in the stretch? How do we stretch ourselves but not stretch ourselves too far to the point where we snap? How do we live in this balance. And so we're going to speak about this for just a few minutes. The, the, the scripture we're going to camp in is Isaiah chapter 54, um, a beautiful scripture. Most, you know, churches would use it um, maybe like a, at the beginning of the year for their vision. But I kind of want to just articulate and give you a bit of, of handles to it so we know how to work with it. Isaiah 54 verse 2 to 3. Enlarge your house, build an addition. Spread out your home, spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other, nation, other nations and resettle the ruined cities. What a beautiful promise, right? What a beautiful promise for, from God that if you stretch out, if you expand, if you enlarge, he says, you will soon be bursting at the seams. Have a look at how it phrases it in the amplified version. It says this, enlarge the site of your tent to make room for more children. Yes. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings and do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your peg stakes firm in the ground. For you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will take possession of nations and will inhabit deserted cities. I love this promise. Because you see the heart God has for his people. The heart to grow us and expand us and stretch us. The only challenge is when you look contextually at when this was written. This was written at a time when the nation of Israel were in captivity. They were in captivity. They were in exile. And this is crazy because normally when you are in captivity, in exile, the last thing you think of is expansion. You don't think stretching, right? When you are in a season of limitation, you don't think expansion. You think limitation. You think that, listen, I'm, I'm not planning on being here for a while. We've been in those seasons, eh? When you're going through hardship, you're not planning like, okay, listen, let me, ooh, let me get comfortable. No, no, no. You're like, listen, God, six months, three months max. Like, yet God says to them, listen, expand, stretch out your tents. Listen, get comfortable. That's the equivalent. Think about it. That's the equivalent of being sentenced to jail. When you finally get to jail, you get to your cell. Hopefully, if you're like, you're not Tabo Besto or something. Like, when you get to your cell, it's like, you know what, let, let's, let's make it comfortable. Let's, let's put up some curtains, put a fireplace in, you know, put some paintings up, pictures of my family. Like no one thinks of doing that because we know prison's not a comfortable place. It's like, I don't want to be here. I'm not going to make it homey. No, no, no. The plan is to leave. So we see this image where God calls them that in a season of limitation to still stretch. How do we live in the stretch when we feel like we're in seasons of waiting, when we feel like we're in seasons of limitation, when we feel like there's no more stretch in us? That's really what I want to speak about this morning. And I really believe that like the nation of Israel, even with us, that God calls the nation of Israel to stretch and enlarge while still in captivity. That God calls you and I to stretch and enlarge while still in limitation, while we aren't where we want to be because... Normally, we want to we wait the season out until the conditions are favorable, and then we'll stretch, right? Then we can expand. Then we can enlarge. But we don't realize it's in that very season that the stretching happens and that we know that God is in it. Because no one wants to enlarge or stretch in a season of limitation. Let's think about what it looks like for you and I 
today, in today's life, in today's world, the purposes and promises God has for us is not just going to fall in our laps. It's going to require some preparation. It's going to require some seasons of stretching. Let me tell you what my burden is. If I can be brutally honest, I've got a burden for my generation and the next generation that they lack the resilience to be patient during the stretching seasons. And I can see this already within culture. Many young people don't have the resilience to wait things out, to endure things. If you, if you want to do yourself a favor, just have a chat with some seasoned people because you know, we can't call them old people anymore. We have to call them seasoned. It's politically incorrect. Seasoned people because they've been through seasons in life. You see? You see? So if you have a chat with some seasoned people, what you'll realize is this. Look at what they've had to endure and look at where they're at and what God has blessed them with because they've been willing to endure. I really believe our generation can learn something about endurance in the stretching that God will bless us at the end if we are simply faithful. So everything that God has for us won't just fall into our laps. We need to endure some stretching, some expanding, and these seasons are never comfortable. And if we are so comfort-driven and so complacent that we will never have the resilience to endure the stretching because we settle for comfort. And so we need to enlarge our world, enlarge our minds, expand ourselves, expand our capacity, our thinking, and our mindsets in order to grab a hold of what God has planned for us. Think about it. God has given every one of us a purpose, and God has given the church a mandate, and those two things go hand in hand. Your purpose and the church's mandate. The church will never achieve its mandate if you and I don't step into our purpose, right? You are never in a church accidentally, just so you know. No matter how you ended up here, you're never in a church accidentally. God gives the church the people he needs or th that the church needs to accomplish what the church needs to accomplish, right? So purpose and mandate go hand in hand. But here's the thing, that won't happen without a bit of stretching. Being stretched out of your comfort zone, being stretched beyond what you think is your capacity. And I say that intentionally because we, we think we know what our capacity is. But God always sees more in us. So God, this is what I can handle. God's like, come, I show you something. Let, let's just make it real, just for a second, because this is the part where, where the rubber hits the road. There's always this tension, this stretch between one thing and the other. So for most of us, it would be the tension, that stretch between pain and purpose. The fact that we know God has called us to a purpose, yet many of us live within the pain of our current situation. It's like, God, I know you want me to move towards purpose, but can we just acknowledge that I'm going through a season of pain? That God, I'm, I'm in a season right now where I'm navigating some stuff, where, where inside is hurting, where, where my family is taking strain, where my marriage might be uh, taking a bit of strain, or my parenting, my kids aren't where they need to be. God, how can I focus on purpose when I'm trying to deal with pain? Can we just be honest that that's a reality that many people live in? Can we, can we acknowledge the tension of circumstance and faith? That we often are required to have faith, yet we are always in the midst of a circumstance. And the circumstance is usually limiting. That God, if you look at where I am, how am I supposed to believe you for that when around me doesn't look like I can accommodate that? Like I can, I've got the capacity to facilitate that. that there's circumstance and there's faith. And it's not either or because people who are focused on faith but never acknowledge the circumstance rob themselves of something because it's by acknowledging the circumstance that faith really comes into play, that we see what God sees and not just what we see, right? And so we need to be careful how to manage that tension. What about the tension of generosity and frugality? Or maybe let's move the word frugality and replace it with the word stewardship. All of us want to be generous, right? All of us would want to have enough to provide more for others. I mean, if you pay attention to the media, I look at some of these billionaires and what they're spending their money on, and I'm thinking, look, guys, we really don't need another spaceship in space or a submarine in the ocean, whatever. Like, we don't need more of these things. Like, give it to us. Like, I'll show you what to do. I've got purpose behind what we do here, right? So, forgive me, but sure. There's always that tension between generosity and frugality or, or, or stewardship. We all want to be generous, but we've all got limitation with our finance. God has given us big dreams, but little budgets. Jesus, what am I supposed to do now? Like you've given me this vision and then you give me the, like what is, this is not a paycheck. This is a bag of peanuts. God always gives the church bigger vision than he does budget. I've just had to settle with that. 
And it's never either or. It's always both and. Because it's, it's in that stretch that we see God's faithfulness. What about the last one? The tension between service unto God and self-indulgence. This is a tough one. Because here we find ourselves working hard. Many of us work hard. We work hard for what we've earned. And we want to use what we've earned well. I've worked hard for my money. I want to use my money. I've worked hard with my time. I want to rest well. And then you come to church and you hear things like serve. It's like the new F word in church. It's like, whoa, 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 you can't say that to me. Yet there's this beautiful tension that God, you've given me what I have. And I believe that in giving it to you, you'll give me more. And so the self-indulgence is, you know what, protect this. Yet the Christian faith calls us to a contrary life where we give it up. And there's a tension in that, isn't it? But it's always in that stretch that God does his best work. Because if we lay it down, God is able to do more with it than what we can, or what we think we can. Here's what I know. Whenever you and I hold on to something, whenever we hold on to something at the expense of being obedient to God's call, we end up losing both the thing we're holding on to and what Jesus is calling us to. Think about that. If God is calling me to do something and I'm protecting something else, I lose the thing I'm protecting and what God is calling me to. But if I'm willing to give up what I'm trying to protect, God gives me both this and that. If we are simply willing to embrace the stretch. Look at what Jesus says, Matthew 16. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try and hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your, give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Think, think of what that thing is for you. What's the stretch for you? For some people, it's genuinely time. That God, I've already got limited time. And so what you try and do is you try and protect your time with everything you have. And God says, listen, if you give that to me, I'll give you more of it. How is it that there are some people that just look like they have more than 25 hours in a day? I know this 24. You, it's bar one, 25 hour day. This is like, how do you have the time to have a family and a business and study and uh, you just like, yet for some of them, they've just learned, if I submit it to God, God blesses me with more. We don't understand that principle because the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom. If you lay it down, God makes it more. But if you try and protect it, you lose it. If we try and protect our time, why is it that we feel like we've never got enough time? It's the same with money and energy and everything else. I feel like I've never got energy. That's, therefore, I can't serve. But in me serving, God renews my energy and I feel like I can do more. God works it in weird ways. Can we just embrace the stretch? Let me give you an example of, of people who fail to embrace the stretch. And look at how it ended for them. Matthew 19 verse 21. Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell everything you have. Give the money to the poor and uh, you will have treasures in, treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when a young man heard this, he went away sad for he had many possessions. He wasn't willing to stretch. I was like, listen, if you want to, if you want to step into this, this is how you need to stretch. You go sell everything you have. Give that money away. Follow me. He couldn't live in that stretch. And here's the interesting thing. That's the one and only time we hear the story of that young man. And we don't hear about him again. Yet we look at some other disciples and they were willing to stretch and we know their names today. Maybe, maybe there's something in the stretch that you and I can learn. Let me show you another one. Um, Jesus teaches, he's got a bunch of disciples following him and his teaching is quite hard. And this is what he says. Many of the disciples said, this teaching is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware of his disciples that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? I love, I love his boldness. He goes, oh, sorry, are you offended? And here's what I love. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the 12 and asked, are you also going to leave? This is one of my favorite passages in scripture. Because we would think that Jesus would pander to our excuses, Right? Oh, I'm sorry. You think he's like, no, 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 guys, I was joking. It was a test. I just wanted to see if you wanted to do it. Anyways, come, 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 let's go. I'll take you with me. He's like, no, no, and you guys, you also want to go. I'd be like, yo, Jesus. You're going to have no disciples left. Just chill. <laughs> but have a look at those who are willing to stretch. Peter. Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. And so Peter says, listen, I'd rather live in the stretch than live without you. I'd rather live in the stretch, 
in this stretching, this discomfort, this not, not, not being sure of how it's going to end, whatever that looks like, I'd rather live in the stretch than to live without you. How many of us simply miss out on this abundant life that Jesus promises because we're reluctant to embrace the season of stretching? Embrace the more that God is calling us to. As I speak, for some of you, you might know what this is. For some, you already know, this is the more God is calling me to that I've been, I've been trying to quantify and calculate and I'm trying to do the maths that if I do this, where is this going to come? Can I, can, I, can I challenge you? Trust it to God. Just in trust God. I, I might already not have the time, but you know what? I'm going to say yes anyway. I, I might already be stretched a bit, but God, I'm going to trust you with it anyway. Here's the tip though. There's a difference between you and I wanting to stretch ourselves and God wanting to stretch us. When you and I want to stretch ourselves, there's only so much capacity. But when God stretches us, we've got more capacity than we think. Let me, let me give you an example. I, I love these little balls. I know for a fact that I've got capacity for three in my hand. I know that if I stretch myself and I shift my strategy, I can maybe, maybe do four. Oh, hang on, there we go. Ooh, I can just, just do four. But there's no ways I can do five. But here's what I do know is that if I want to stretch my capacity and I want to have more capacity to carry more balls, I'm going to have to rely on something outside of myself. And this is where God comes in and he says, listen, if you want to carry more, you're going to have to let go and trust me. And so God, I, I will give you my balls and realize that I can actually carry more. And here's the thing, in my own hand, you can leave the ball. It's, it's fine. You can return the ball. <laughs> but if I rely on something outside of myself, I can carry more than I thought I could. Because in, in my own hand, I can carry five. But if I give it to God, God can make me carry more with his vessel. Here's what we need to realize, church, that the Holy Spirit helps us carry more than we thought we could. That when he causes us to stretch, when I had the capacity for three balls, maybe four, God says, listen, you can carry so much more than you think you can if you simply trust it to me and you allow me to be the vessel that carries it for you. If you do it in your own strength, yes, you'll be limited. But if you do it in my strength, there's no telling how much more you can carry. And that's meant to be encouraging because for many of us, we don't know how we're going to carry more. We don't know where we're going to get the energy, the time, the resource, the money, the finance, whatever it is. For there's many of us where God has given us dreams and visions. There's many of us where God has called us to ministries and God has called us to carry weight. Many of us know that we need to step into positions of ministry or service for God's kingdom. And you're just not sure because you know, well, listen, I've got work deadlines, I've got family, I've got kids, whatever it is. But here's what I do know is that when we're submitted to God, God makes it more. Live in the stretch. Live in that stretch. Before I wrap up this morning, I've got a few minutes left. Let me make it practical. How do we live? What are the practicalities of living in the stretch? Of living or, or, or stretching our capacity in a way that, that we know, God, you've brought this about. The first way is this. I need to move from my way to God's way. That sounds simple, but, but let me explain. If I do it my way, I will be tempted to draw some tight boundaries around it. And don't get me wrong, boundaries are important. But there's a time where we need to collapse those boundaries for the purposes of stretching into God's more. If I want to do it my way, I'll do it a certain way at a certain time at my conditions. But if I want to do it God's way, then I need to give up my way. That's what Jesus said. If you want to be my disciple, give up your way, take up your cross and follow me. That means, God, I might not always be able to quantify it. I might not always be able to do the maths around it. I might not always be able to have it figured out. But I'm going to trust you and your way. That if you've said it, I will do it. Are we simply willing to do it God's way? For some of us, there's a lot when it comes to faith that we haven't been able to, to settle in and of ourselves. Are we simply willing to do it God's way? Maybe you've got some questions. Listen, before I do this, I just need to understand. I need to, it needs to make sense. Are we simply willing to say, God, I'm going to do it your way? Second one is this, from instant to delayed gratification. This is another thing I've learned from some older people in my life. I'm grateful for this. From instant gratification to delayed gratification. Because for many people, especially younger people, the instant gratification is a big deal. I'll do it, but I want the title, I want the position, I want the platform, I want whatever it is. Am I simply willing to delay the gratification and commit to the stretching process? 
without recognition, without a reward, without acknowledgement, am I willing to delay my gratification for the process of the stretching? For those of you who work in companies, you, you normally see this. When people are gunning for the position so quickly, it's like, listen, you, you just came here last year, relax. Take it easy. Delayed gratification is one of the biggest gifts that we can receive because it molds our character. That God, in that season, in that stretching, you are doing something in me. You know what I love when you read the scripture? Read it carefully. Notice Jesus spent 30 years in obscurity. We know about his birth. We know one or two things that happened when he was 12. And then we know nothing until he was 30. And then we see three years of his ministry. Can we just acknowledge that something happens in the obscure years when God does something behind the scenes? And for that stretching season, can we realize that God is doing something in us? And we can delay the gratification until the time comes. And then God is the one who promotes. God is the one who rewards. God is the one who does what he needs to do because we've gone through the stretching season. Don't just want instant gratification because then we bypass a growing process, right? Number three, from short-term comfort to eternal significance. This is my favorite one. From short-term comfort. See, usually when you and I are saying no to what God is calling us, it's because we are holding on to a short-term comfort. Let's get very frank right now. For many people, it's their time. Listen, I just, I don't want to give up my time. Normally, Sunday mornings, I do this, or this is my routine, or I normally have this, or this is my time with my family, whatever it is. Brutally honest, God can do more with your time devoted to him than you can. Because all you're going to do is you're probably going to sleep, or you're going to watch Netflix, or you're going to waste it on something else. Short-term comfort versus Eternal significance says, if I'm willing to give up this bit of comfort for that, what, extra, extra service or that extra serving, whatever it is, that extra one thing, what's the eternal significance this will have? What's the eternal significance of the extra hour? What's the eternal significance of the extra resource or the extra money? What's the eternal significance of the short-term comfort I'm holding on to? Am I willing to give it up and live in that stretch for God to do more in the long term. Here's the problem with that. Again, instant gratification. We want to see the reward immediately. But if we're willing to do that, we might not receive the reward now. But eternal significance, when we get to eternity, God will be like, Here's, this is what all your sacrifices did. Look at all of these people you've impacted. Look at the hearts that were challenged. Look at the hearts that were changed. Look at the people that were impacted from, for the kingdom simply because you were willing to give up an extra hour on a Sunday morning. Think about it. If we think about it this way, we'll realize that this stretch is necessary, church. Living in the stretch is absolutely necessary. It's not optional. It is necessary. Here's my question. What is your stretch? I can't tell you what it is, but you know what it is. As I'm speaking, you might already know. God might have already been speaking to you. At, at United Church, we've been challenging people the whole year about community. Hey, get into a family group. Lead a family group. For some of you, it's just opening up your home. We've got tons of people who want to join a group. We just don't have the venues. If you're willing to just say, hey, listen, I'm willing to, here's my home. Someone else will facilitate the group. You just use my home. Some people are like, you know what? I don't have a home, but I'd love to facilitate one. Step in. Stretch yourself. Do something. Get involved and serve. Get involved in, in making Sunday special for someone else. You know what happens? You stretch yourself, but you stretch the kingdom as well. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Let me give you a chance to just reflect on it with every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to think. Just think. What is your next stretching step? What is the next step that's going to stretch you a little bit? Maybe you've been fearing it. Maybe you've been a bit scared. It might be in church. It might be out of church. For some of you, it might be a business venture that God has called you to start and, and you've been reluctant because you know what you're trying to hold on to. For some of you, there might be things that you might need to leave behind. God is calling you to a new season. For some of you, there might be things God is calling you to hold on to and you feel that it's stretching you, but you're just maybe a bit reluctant. I just want you to think about it for a second. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would minister to us in this point. That you would speak to us. That you would impress in our hearts the reasons and purpose. The stretching that you are bringing into our lives. Whatever that may be. 
whatever the nature of the stretch. I pray that you would build resilience and capacity into us. I pray, Father God, that you would build, that you would, we would be resilient. That we would be able to withstand. I pray that the stretch wouldn't, we wouldn't overexpand ourselves, overstretch ourselves. But I pray that it would be within our capacity. I know that you see more in us than we see in ourselves. You know how much more we can do than what we are currently doing. God, you know, you know. Therefore, we hand it over to you. And as you lead us, may we follow in obedience. Before I wrap up, with every head bowed and every eye closed, for those of you, your stretch might simply be to receive Jesus this morning. Just receive Jesus this morning and say, I've tried to figure it out. I've tried to do life on my own. I've tried to live in my own terms. Maybe you've had a certain perspective of Christianity or a certain perspective of religion. And you've had all your thoughts and ideologies and battles and wrestles. And maybe for you, you might just need to stretch and say, God, I give up. And I place my life in your hands. The biggest stretch you can make is placing your life in the hands of Jesus. He can do more with your life than what you ever believed you could. If you are simply willing. So here's my challenge. Are you willing to make the stretch and receive Jesus this morning? The good news is, is that he's already prepared for this. He's already died, so your sins are taken care of. All the offenses against God has been done and dealt with because of Jesus. The good news is that you receive eternal life beyond this life. The good news is that you walk in purpose and meaning and significance. Your life counts for something. The good news is that there is abundant life that awaits you. And that doesn't start when you die. That starts now. It just requires a stretch. So on the count of three, if you could be brave enough to give me a wave, it would be my privilege to pray for you. One, two, three. God bless you. God bless you. Father God, for every single person with their hand raised this morning, we pray, Father God, that they would step into the stretching and that they would come to know you personally and intimately. We pray this morning, God, that as they step into the season of stretching, as they step into receiving you, that you would stretch them in a way that they never thought they would, but it would be a good stretch where they receive the eternal and abundant life that you promised. We pray this morning, God, that they would know that their sins are forgiven, that they have an eternity secure in you, I pray that they would know the Holy Spirit who leads and guides them into all truth. And finally, I pray that they would know this community of faith, this, the brothers and sisters around them who have their best interest at heart that they can walk with all the days of their life. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's give those people a massive round of applause. We trust this message was helpful to you. We'd love for you to stay in touch. So follow us on Instagram at United Church SA or contact us on our WhatsApp number. Be blessed.